Okay, friends, so for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you will no doubt note a bit of discontinuity between the end of the last episode and the start of this one. If you recall, the end of the last episode ended when we were ambushed by Alps on a escort mission and the game crashed. Now, what happened was I very stupidly failed to then immediately load the autosave at the start of that fight, play out the fight, and then save onto my main damaging save file. Instead, I, I left it and then in the intervening time loaded my offline grinding file, which then changed the autosave. So that's doubly disappointing because it means that the event we had in the last episode where we got that amazing legendary dagger now didn't proc again. Anyway, what's a few days missing in 338 days in total? Okay, Black Crow, Balthazar. God, it's hot. Time is it? It is Friday 25th. 32 degrees at half past four in the afternoon. <laughs> Africa. God, it's so fucking hot. My god, jeez, that is a lot of brigands. That's a lot of brigands. That's a lot of brigands. How many tier two crossbows? One, two, at least three. Oof. Free music. Right, what to do, what to do. If I can hit any of these crossbowmen, I'm gonna... Oh, good shot. I love that these guys have come so far forward because that means my front line can go there and still use... Audio? Where's that other audio coming from? What the fuck? <laughs> so the music is still playing, is it? Does it have the other sound effects? What is going on? Okay, we're having some technical difficulties, what the fuck? <laughs> Where's the second set of audio coming through? Let's just play this fight through with the one music track playing and then try to figure out what on earth is going on afterwards. It does unfortunately mean that we're not going to have any sound effects, but this is new. I've never had this issue before. is going on weird super weird 157% chance no rather use indomitable what's up Mizuma dude have you ever had this happen to you what's happening to me now where I've got like two audio tracks coming through it's it's not my own twitch stream playing double Oh, check it out. If I, if, if, I, if I unmute the audio, then there's like a second audio track playing. I can't work out where this audio track is coming from. Uh... 
Uh, well, whatever. Let's finish this fight, save, and then restart the stream. Weird, weird shit. Quite a rough fight actually, especially because I'm still in the in the process of leveling up my lower level background lads. Yeah, that helps. Thank you, Marksman. Uh, let's see here. Let's throw a net onto that nerd. Yeah, off of his head. Now is the next audio track not even going to start again? Like, what the f***? This is so strange. Well, there's a first for everything. Get domed. Love Warhammers. Get wrecked. Can you decapitate one of these marksman nerds? Yes, you can. Oh, damn it, Levitsmere. 78 miss. But it does illustrate why I need to replace Levitsmere. He doesn't have the melee attack skill. We need. Ow! Damn it! It's crazy how different these fights play out when I don't have my two best archers available. Like the difference is unbelievable. Yeah, southern flank is compromised, we gotta do something about that. Now audio levels in general are too high. That's better. I have indeed, actually, and I wanted to talk about this in the next next video, but I've been thinking a lot about Battle Brothers, and I'm clearly in that phase again where, where I need a break. However, it occurs to me just how much work I still need to do with Damage Inc. to get them to where I need them to be to do the kind of stuff I want to do. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a commitment to you guys as viewers to stream at least two hours a week of Battle Brothers. So, um, so I'll stream at least once a week. I'll do two hours. However, then this this save file of damaging, I want to be able to start playing it offline by myself without having to stream. That's gonna allow me to get a lot done. Because um, there's also there's a oh ouch, a couple situations like where I want to play but I don't want to stream. Come to us, Badger. Tonight is, the, tonight is the night of audio issues. We've got two tracks of Battle Brothers playing, and for the life of me, I've been meaning to try to figure out why Streamlabs is doubling up the alerts. So anyway, as I was saying is, uh, I'm going to commit to streaming Battle Brothers at least Hang on, uh, this has not gone well now. At least once a week, a couple hours. And then I'm gonna keep playing offline. And then we'll do like a once a week check-in with, with Damage Inc. So you can see what progress I've made in the intervening week. And then that's gonna allow me to do two things at once, which is to take a bit of a break from Battle Brothers, which I definitely need. And while still making progress, because being able to play by myself offline is so much more chill. Me to play on stream. Let's fucking get him, Russian. What's disappointing is that, like, in these three hundred and something days we've played. I'm looking at all of these guys here, and there's like two or three guys qualify as superstars. I need to replace almost the entire team. I sure as hell don't want to start again, though, that's for sure. Oh, 
good for you, Gamatos. I'm still stuck in that damage situation where I keep getting deep into the game and then restarting. It's like, I'll play a lot and then realize how badly I fucked it up and then I want to start again. But that's now why I want to be able to play offline because I can do a lot of grinding in a much shorter period of time. Oof. Oh, and I can actually show you, lads. I got my hands on another legendary item. Here we go. Look, unsung heroes darts. Pretty cool. If Ration gets hit in the head here, he could quite easily die. The duelist is an interesting build because I've, I've really struggled to make decent duelists. The best attempt I've had at making a decent duelist is on my Skaldung tribe playthrough, those, uh, those barbarians. But I feel like the duelist is one of those builds where the background is super important. The type of brother you use is super important. Because I had a, I think it was a day tailor who obviously has rubbish stats to begin with. But he had iron lungs and he had three stars in initiative and um, fatigue and hit points. So he, he basically perfectly set up to be a duelist. Um, a dodgy, you know, sword master type duelist. But then even at level 11 with all of those three stars, he still didn't have high enough base stats. And he was effective because what I what I tried to do and what I found when I'm when I'm building a like a sword master type duelist dude is that every single point in every single level up has to go to initiative um initiative fatigue and hit points to give him any kind of survivability that, that compares to the heavy armor guys. But then I'm not putting a lot of points into melee skills, so it's not particularly dangerous. There's a lone wolf main character. Oh yeah, so making him lone wolf helps as well. But anyway, I'm I'm still learning on how to how to build a, a decent uh, OG duelist type dude. It's actually amazing how crap I am at this game, considering how many hours I've played. Anyway, I don't think anyone comes to this channel for top tier plays. I'm down. I want that set of armor. What's up, Malky? Oh, Lone Wolf Origin, that's what you mean. Yeah, on my Scolding Tribe, the axe using barbarians. Also Lone Wolf, but I really didn't enjoy Lone Wolf as a background. Like, it's great for the first 150 days when you have this badass guy. But then after like 150 days where all of my other guys are leveled up, he's just another one of the lads. I mean, sure, he has excellent stats and everything, but he's just another lad. And I hated the whole not being able to have reserves things because then when I'm trying to replace somebody, you have to fire someone who's level 11 and replace them with someone who's level 1. It's just... So far, I still think that this is probably my favorite origin. I love this origin. It's the, the economic impact of it is just so good. Dakota, level 8 archer, so footwear you need cover. Uh, Warhammer, user, Gungnir's replacement, fatigue. This is the issue, he's not going to have great melee defense. Only 3 melee defense at level 5. Hmm. Absolutely, but then again, like if, if you want to know the, the the perfect, objectively correct way to play, then go watch uh, F a Filthy Robot. So this is going to be a Warhammer replacement guy on the outside flank, or with his slightly lower melee defense, maybe we put him on the inside flank. I could change him into an axe user. But then again, with all this accuracy, I want him to be landing his hits as he can. 
We got another fighting axe, but I don't need any more. I've already got seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we are set up for fighting tree men. Someone here was using a butter knife. Who was there? You go. Elstia. Oh, piss off, you'll have to pay with blood. A shit ton of bounty hunters. Oof. Good lord, 22 of them? Oh, come on. And Ration needs to go to the back line. I just hope he has his whip because he can mobily whip from the back line. This looks super painful. I really don't want to give up this mission. This is going to be such a big payday for us. Okay, let's get through this without any fatalities. The main thing for that is getting Ration off the front line. Oh, piss, and he doesn't have his whip. He can't do shit. Alright, so we will murder the bejesus out of one of these guys who actually has a whip. Give Ration that whip. This is going to be hard. It's basically 11 versus 21. Hello. Thanks for the host. Bring it out, you're dead. I want to go for that position, but I'm kind of leaving Levitzmere all off by himself. Which I think, actually, if I consider the high ground, it's more important. Like, I want to send Criddle Fritz here to help, but he's so wounded. He's going to take one crossbow and he's going to be dead. It is, and in retrospect, like, I mean, actually, like, I, I like the fact that you get 200 armor. 200 armor for 17 fatigue and you're taking half hit points damage i think it's really good it's a really nice com uh, combination like at that point when you have 200 and 120 you could well make the argument for taking battle forged because you would get five percent off of the five percent of 320 the 17 17 less hit at the beginning and then less and less it sets three hits, 17, 10, and then five. It's like 40 extra armor, actually. No. Is that worth it? I don't know. That would require doing some intense mathematics, which is not what I do. My Criddle Fitz needs to go help here, but he is too wounded. David Smith is kind of off by himself now. If I can get Aegis up there to help, that'll be better. Is that an open angle? It's not. Well, like, I mean, every every campaign I play, I learn. And for me, the big takeaways and what I've learned the most from this campaign is that I have completely overvalued um, the nimble light armor builds. They're just don't compare in terms of survivability with the heavy armor boys. And now I find myself in a situation where I have to replace almost all of my lads. I'm still quite happy to put light armor and do all that shit for my light armor boys. Uh, for my backline boys, I should say. But for the frontline guys, I feel like you have to go with heavy armor. 269s there is. Nixus disarmed? Oh, for goodness sake. Oh. 
37, 37, 33, and 53. It's quite low. Oh, nice. They both hit. I want Gungia to keep that bit of high ground. Six percent. These fuckers are so hard to hit. <sighs> well, I mean, if I combine the lessons from this campaign with the lessons from my uh, faith militant, which is like it was surprising how how uh, light on fatigue the great mace build is. Because even if you proc Berserk with a Great Mace, you're only swinging it twice. <laughs> Fuck's sake, we've got to run away here. Hang on, who died? Was that a strike down or a kill? Uh, little Fritz. Uh, hit for hits. It just. Struck down my Bannerman. Well, I'm not going to reload now, because if we are super lucky, that could be brain damage. Yeah, I've, I've found it noticeably harder to find guys who can use heavy armor well. Farmers and... Oh, that motherfucker. Farmers and... Um, not beast men, wild men. Are still your best bet. Drop the dog. Drop all the dogs. Lumberjacks do. I, really, I just really don't like how expensive they are. Every time I've hired a lumberjack, it's never been worth it. I think they get exactly the same bonus fatigue and hit points as farmhands. They're just three gold extra at the start. Yeah, the minor defense is, is a killer, and their negative events suck as well. Okay, we're gonna have to run away and give up this give up this fight here. We're just getting slaughtered by these mercenaries. I mean, this is our backline are all low level. My front line were quite beat up from that fight. Take the damned head. So does this mean we at least still get paid the, the usual... Okay, we just don't get the double bonus. That's fine. I really wanted that 4,000 gold though. But hey, we got caught with our pants down and with our armor destroyed. I need the kettle hat. I don't think so. Um, I don't think I actually... I've already got one set of extra armor in reserve, plus all the armor being worn by the guys who are actually sitting in reserve. So we're up to level 8 there. Up to level 9, 7. So we, we are getting there. We are slowly getting there. The nice thing is I can afford to keep on giving them training experience. Got here, a nice delivery, that's exactly what I need. Feilstein. Give me a rumor. Nope. I'm gonna keep on stopping in at every single city. I'm really determined to get rumors for legendaries.
Okay, awesome. So that's another whip. I've got almost, I think I've got seven whips in total now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight whips. Seven. No, it's seven whips. Got enough of these, got enough of these, that's all fine. I'm, I'm gonna keep ex experimenting with, with, with duelists because in the little bit that I've done, I've I've never found the extra damage boost from double grip and the armor pierce from what's that perk called again? Uh duelist? Duelist. I've never found it to be worth it. 10 out of 10 times, the extra damage from a two-handed weapon is just, it's just better. Oh, yes, come on, give me the free dagger. Tell me my fortune. Oh, damn. Well, actually, I can show you before I log off. I've actually tried some thrower duelists with my little Viking group. And they are great. But the thing is, like, I mean, I've found that I'm two or three shotting the majority of bandit raiders. But the thing is, I'm actually starting to come around to having archers who specialize in bows and then have axe mastery as a, as a secondary. Where if they can't shoot anyone or if their only target is armored, then they just switch to the axe and just break a shield. Which is particularly good for me because so many of, of my frontline guys is where the most of my damage comes from. Have I come to the wrong city? I think I have. No, no I got paid. Okay, good. Uh, I should still be continually, continually trying to find better players. Oof, that's nice, but doesn't have the right stats. I'm strong and fatigued, but... Hmm. I can afford to be super picky. I want perfect star and stat distribution. Almost. I want melee defense, I want melee skill, and I want fatigue. Are you Drew, Modern? Oh, nice. <laughs> I just want to play my next game so I can get it over with. I, I, I hate Blood Bowl. I fucking hate it. Uh, old Graveyard. One's in hand. Settle. Whenever I see a three skull, I get excited. Give me a three skull drive off brigands, and hopefully there's a champion. Uh, Ukator, use exclamation mark mods, and it'll give you a link to where you can find the mods that I'm using. Shitload of marksmen. It's one of the mods that I'm using, which is, I uh, forget what it's called. I think it's called Tryout or something like that. It doubles the cost of trying out a brother. But it lets you see what their star distribution is, which I think is brilliant, and it's really, it, it's the way that the game should work right from the beginning, if you ask me. I think it's BB Mods. BB Mods? I mean BB Mods. It's in, it's in the stream title. Absolutely, like once I started using the extra, extra speed, I, I just, I can't go back to it. Same patient. We'll fight this at night because they're going to have a huge range fighter advantage. Also, like, I never realized how irritating it was playing against the horde of zombies where the zombie goes. Aah! And then it goes to the next one. And then... And then it's the next one. If you're up against a swarm of 31 zombies and you don't have the extra speed mod... Actually, no, hang on. I'm talking out of my ass here. The extra speed in-game is... faster AI movement. But anyway. Scratch what I was saying. If you don't use faster AI movement... Well, I can tell us, yeah, that, that three-star ranged guy is great, but he doesn't have a star in fatigue. He doesn't have a star in hit points. 
so the thing is i'm like i haven't my, my guys aren't great but i have an established group of guys i'm gonna keep on like i'm not gonna stop until i get the perfect star distribution i want seven guys up front all of them with stars in melee skill melee defense and fatigue Do we run forward? I think we do. And also, like, my archers that I've got, these guys are okay. Like, you see, see this, is, like, same on here. He's not, look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Extra fatigue. This is a nine-star brother with perfect star distribution. Deathwish is fine. Fatigue, strong is nice. And then Kota is almost right. Like, he's got three stars in range and two in range skill. Like my front line currently are okay but i need guys who are absolutely amazing like i'm not saying that guy who i failed to hire wasn't great he was great he's a nine out of ten but at this point i'm just going to keep hiring and firing thousands of brothers i want 10 out of tens my dream is to have a group of 12 guys who are all 10 out of 10. dream uh kota actually move forward it <laughs> yeah i want a group of 12 guys oh yeah going to shoot at i want to start taking out the archers but look at how low the hit chances are yeah. oh, same on that was super unlikely that was 12 percent to hit and then 25 percent chance to hit the head on top of that also i need to replace my pikemen or at least hire two shield breakers or do i though because the thing is i currently I need guys to break shields to facilitate my Warhammer users and my, you know, my Cleaver users. Because every time I take a swing with a Warhammer and it just bounces off a shield, it makes me sad. Yeah, like right there. Fiddlefoot should actually be using a long axe to break that shield. But then again, if I do get the group of lads that I want, which is, you know, 12 superstars, then I think I won't need the shield breakers then, because then the guys who I will have up front will be so melee skilled that they will be able to hit even if targets have shields. A reasonable amount of time. I see a mod now. I don't even want to talk about Blood Bowl. I, I fucking hate Blood Bowl. I've, I've just, this has been the most wretched season I've ever had. I'm 1 0 and 3, and I think I've got two level ups in four games. One of my catchers died, so I've only got 10 elves. It's just been, ugh, absolutely wretched. Well, the best time I've had breaking shields has been with my Peasant Horde. And I think the Peasant Horde is a slightly different case because you have the numbers where you can afford to have a couple of guys just dedicated breaking shields. What was surprising was um, on the one save file, which I can't show you now, but it's nine lads up front. All nine of them have shield specialization and axe specialization. So they're really hard to hit. And it's so cool because you just go down the line alternating. One guy goes, you know, smack, smack, breaks the shield. The guy next to him, swing, swing, kills. And then you go down the line like that. 
but that, that, that build does struggle with dealing with huge numbers of enemies because you don't have AoE. I mean, you, you could spend a lot of time working out the numbers, but I always, I always don't like, you know, looking at it in pure maths perspective. Like, sure, if 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 one brother spends his entire turn breaking a shield, he's done zero damage that turn. So if, if half your brothers spend one turn breaking shields, then you've overall, in in one sense, you've lowered your overall damage output of your whole team by fifty percent, which is pretty bad. However. If you don't break the shields, and then if X amount of brothers don't land the hits that they would have hit... It's maths, I hate it. But this is what I'm saying, I want to, I'm so determined to get so many of these amazing superstar brothers. I want guys who are accurate and dangerous enough that they don't need other guys to have to break the shields for them. Yeah, that just makes me so sad when you hear that. Navitsmere is in deep trouble here. I'm chatting too much. I'm not focusing on the damn game. Oof. But of all the backgrounds, the, the Peasant Hall is actually my favorite. It's obviously harder because you don't have access to the, you know, the very best classes, but... You can get around that by just being uh, willing to hire and fire dozens of brothers to find what are the guys you want. Okay, who's going to get Levitzmir out of there? It's going to take two turns to run Gungnir up there. It's scary. But at least Levitzmir now can activate Indomitable. Barbarian is great too. And in the bit of Barbarian playthrough that I did, it was actually... Um, refreshing and surprisingly not that hard to have a playthrough where right from day one you are aggro against and you stay aggro against one of the houses. Twenty six percent chance to hit ten fifteen. This is bad. <laughs> Stop his dream. That's gonna get audio clipped. Oh. Look at these lads, they're so Fight, fucking please. exhausted they can hardly move. Good, good will you, will Marsh you, Del you <laughs> Thanks for the sub, my man. Welcome to Camelot. Tis a silly place. Love, Levitzmere. Love. Only a model. Shh. See, Levitzmere is not great in terms of his stats, but even with his heavy armor, it just makes so much of a difference for survivability. We are really struggling with shields, though. One of my favorite uh, lines in any movie ever is, Are you suggesting coconuts migrate? Not at all. Could be carried. What? Out under the dorsal garden feathers? It could grip it by the husk. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I've actually had a playthrough like that as well. Uh, where, you know, best defense is an irresistible offense. And I found it to be incredibly good, better than the defensive build in shorter engagements. But then in the longer grinding huge numbers like this engagements, it's not as good as guys who are tougher because... You just don't have the survivability and you exhaust in like, you know, two turns normally. Like in the Black Monolith, you're really going to struggle with uh, spamming all of the all of the adrenaline, especially if you want to want to be using the AOE abilities, which I think you absolutely have to in the Black Monolith. Ah! 
Your adrenaline recover combo, yeah, so you use re recover whatever you'd like two turns and then adrenaline so you get to start again on the next turn, but then again, you don't get all that much back because you get half your total from recover. Then you have to spend, what, 25 for adrenaline. So you recover how much fatigue? You recover half your adrenaline minus 25 for adrenaline. So there's a certain point where if you don't have X amount of fatigue to begin with, the adrenaline um, recover combo does nothing for you. So you have to have decent fatigue to begin with. Adrenaline first and a go off that. Yeah, so hang on. It's, I would use that too much, so... You need, what, 25 to begin with? Yeah. It's, it's something I need to, 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 uh, to experiment with because... I think it'll be one of those things where intuitively it doesn't make sense to me and intuitively it sounds like it sucks but i think i've established that my chat just know more than me and are, are better than me in, in most most situations so it's something that i'll try offline Why does the Kraken exaggerate that more? Uh, I don't know enough about... Like, I, 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 from what I understand of the Kraken, it grabs your guys, which is like being netted. If you are hit by Kraken tentacles, can the person who has been tentacled, can he at least attack? It's insane that I... Ma that I ever thought that I could make a guard to, to Battle Brothers. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad. Oh, look, adrenaline absolutely has its place. Like, I mean, if, if I'm if I'm going to build a dedicated shield breaker build, which is a backline guy using a long axe, then I absolutely will use adrenaline. And I have used adrenaline in the past. I'm just now currently trying a build that doesn't use adrenaline. I'm comparing. Yeah, uh, four. Got, okay, nice. He's. Did I already give him. I must have given him. Uh, Colossus. It is numbers there. That's awesome. That's 10 stat points on that level. That's one. Did I give adrenaline to my polearm lads? I did not. I think I went for gifted instead because, well, I mean, like, just the fact that I was able to get a monk who could conceivably be decent as a polearm was amazing to me. Like, I mean, finding a monk with two stars in melee skill was absolutely incredible. If it was more of a decent background, I probably would have not taken gifted and given him adrenaline. And then, like, like I mean, my two polearm guys here are real outliers because I saw a chance with their star distribution to be able to get backgrounds that are actually, you know, decent. And, uh, like, I, I'm not disagreeing with you guys. I'm agreeing with everything you're saying, and that's why I want to do more offline grinding with this group of lads so that I can replace all these dudes and fix all the mistakes that I've you know, worked into this, this playthrough. And I answered my own question offline the other day. Uh, I was asking, can you get legendary items in a Fletcher? And yes, you can. I walked into a bowyer, uh, um, a Fletcher, who had a legendary longbow. A bockhorn, a date. How long have we been going for here? 41 minutes. Ooh, a hedge knight. But the thing is, do I even need his armor? I don't think so. Like, I've got plenty of decent heavy armor. I mean, what, how much armor have we got in reserve? I need seven sets of heavy armor. He has one, two, three, four. That doesn't really count. I've got four. But I do need that hedge knight's armor. But we're kind of in no state to fight. Now, this is what the backup armor is for. 71, yeah, that'll do. 
Light armor, heavy, 309, that'll do. 98, that's fine, that's fine. I think for this fight we can get our <clears throat> decent archers in. Marksman, actually no, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Hmm. But again, Makani, at, at the end of the day, look, I mean, uh, I, I will try my best to not get butthurt if people uh, backseat because the truth is, uh, most of the time, people who watch me are better Battle Brothers players than I am. But then again, look, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have fun first and then dig down to the mechanics and get the mechanics right, you know, secondarily. Who's got the fatigue for this coat of plates? I need a... Hmm, 335, 309, 300. I, I need to fight some tree men so I can make that little attachment that's going to make that coat of plates a bit lighter. So, Marsh Dog, uh, heavy armor is basically reinforced male hauberk upwards. The reinforced male hauberk is, is one of the better pieces of armor because it's one of the easier ones you can get your hands on. So, what I would advise you to do is make a little table in, in a Word document and take a calculator and then whenever you look at any piece of armor, just add it to the table and divide its armor value by its maximum fatigue. And then you'll notice each one has a armor to fatigue ratio. Uh, so, coat of scales or reg regular scales I think is... Hmm... 260 for 26 so it's 10 to 1 which is one of the best anything with uh, 10 armor per fatigue point and higher is, is, is amazing and once you do that I'm sure someone's done it already you can probably check reddit or the internet someone would have made that table already but it's I, I would recommend you do it yourself and then if you look at the lighter armors this is what makes noble mail so good look at that it has 11 armor per fatigue point Yes, ex absolutely. So with Nimble, like here, here's a Nimble build here with my Archer. So I've gone above 15. I've got 15 fatigue plus 5, which is a total of 20. So I'm only receiving 47% of damage to hit points. In my own experimentations, without having done the actual math, this is the best combo for light armor. Although <clears throat> I stand to be corrected on what would be. If like if I spend 5 fatigue on the Sele Helmet and only 10 fatigue on the Noble Mail, I think I will take only 40% of damage yeah 240 28 for regular scale indeed yeah i've got one coat of scales here which is is an amazing one as well my, my, my preferred one is coat of plates with the um the, the lining that makes it lighter because the nice thing about that that the lining that makes it lighter is the heavier the armor the more benefit you get out of it so I could turn this 335 for 42 into a 320 for 42 minus 8 for 36. It's really damn good. Okay, enough talk. Let's fight this group. Just swap out the damaged armor pieces. And super importantly, you need, need to make sure that I have daggers ready. You know what? Let's try this fight with my frontline guys without any shields. It's going to free up an extra bit of fatigue. I mean, I, I can't think of the last time I was forced to pull... Well, in the I was about to say, I, could, I can't think of the last time I was forced to have my frontline guys take their shields out and tank behind them, but did that in the last fight. So we'll try to not do it here. Maybe I'll just give the wooden shield... Okay, these guys have lads that they can rotate out with. But I'm glad I have the extra inventory size because I, I want to get to a point where I have seven sets uh, of armor that all has these uh, anti-morale checks morale check runes on them or for, for, for fighting the witch's hut I'm gonna need that <sighs> replace Valwolf okay enough talk let's take a little break when we come back we're gonna be fighting this group of brigands with the hedge knight